name is Stephanie. Welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. This channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things the kids say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes that you find some inspiration along the way. We are into the first week of March now and it is actually starting to feel like spring. Um, I feel like usually we don't get that little hint of spring until April and then we usually get a snow dump and then things finally start thawing into May and right now the snow is actually thawing. We can see some of the grass that we haven't seen in months. Um, it is actually nice enough to go outside like to get the mail or something without putting on all your layers and then feeling like your nose is going to freeze off. So that's kind of refreshing. Um, and we've been able to go play outside. We've gone to the playground, which is still covered in snow. So you still have to put on like your snowsuit and stuff. Um, so you don't end up soaking wet and freezing. But it is nice to be able to go out and play. Um, we've gone sledding and I mean, we do this typically throughout the winter anyway, but it feels different when it's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit and you're playing out in the snow versus like 40 below and you are playing out in the snow. Um, so yes, we still play outside all throughout the winter. But it just feels different when it's starting to warm up a little bit. Um, like if your hat like moves back just a little and your ears are exposed, they don't feel so, so freezing. It actually feels kind of nice. You actually get hot and you end up taking off some of your layers. Um, so yes, spring is definitely coming. I think in the forecast, there's even like 60 degrees Fahrenheit coming up um, in like within the five day forecast, which um, is quite the teaser. So I am not ready to um, wash all of the kids like winter gear yet because I know the second I do, we're going to get a blizzard. It's just what happens. So um, I will not be doing that yet and We'll probably wait till like end of April until I feel like we're really clear of any more snowstorms. But yes, spring is definitely coming. Today I would like to share with you a few finished projects. I was going to save this recording for a little bit later and um, show you them as my works in progress, but I finished them, so instead they will be finished projects to show you. So let's get right into those. These two finished projects are by the designer Tiff and um, they are both test knits. This one is knit up an Aran weight yarn. The pattern states you can use Aran weight or light bulky weight yarn. Um, I wanted to use something that what I already had on hand and that was more budget friendly. Like I super, super love indie dyed yarn. I love the variation. I love the depth of color. I love supporting the artistry of it. Um, and then to balance that out, I think it's nice to be able to go pick up, for me it would be Michael's would be my local craft store, um, to pick up big uh, company or commercial brand yarns that don't, that might not have the variability in color and depth, um, but are more budget friendly. And so this one is made out of a combination of Lion Brands Wool Ease and Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca. The Touch of Alpaca is 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca. The Wool Ease is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. So I used a combination of different heathered yarns for this project. It knits up at a looser gauge. The needles used are US 10, 11, and 13. So that's the equivalent of six millimeter, eight millimeter, and nine millimeter needles. Now this Aran weight yarn, um, I think sometimes can be used as worsted, worsted or Aran weight. Um, I do love how it turned out. It is very drapey and airy and uh, perfect for transitioning from um, winter to spring or let's say fall into winter. You can just throw it on over a tunic or a long sleeve shirt or what have you. I have not woven in all the ends yet so there's like ends sticking out all over the place. Um, you can see all of my 
lovely ends there. I kind of looped it up here so that it wouldn't stick out when I was taking photos of it earlier. Um, it is a very fun and quick knit. The collar is really neat. Um, I hadn't done this kind of ribbing before, so that was really fun. I think it's called a broken twisted rib, maybe. Um, and then in signature Tiff style, there is a herringbone hem, which is really fun because as you're knitting it up, it's like magic. Um, just creating this kind of stitch pattern is really, really neat. Now, I'm not at the point where I feel like if I dropped a stitch or messed up that I can fix it. So I just need to sit down and really focus either after the kids have gone to bed or getting up early before the kids get up so that I can really focus on getting that herringbone done without being distracted or messing up because I do not know how to fix it when I mess up. But yes, I really enjoyed it. This uses, let's see, one, two, three, four, five colors. The pattern is written for you to use five colors or three colors, or really, honestly, if you wanted to do it in two colors, you probably could um, just do like a main color and then pick maybe a fun gradient yarn or something for all of your color work. Um, individually in these different colors, it doesn't use up much yardage. So it's a perfect way to use up random bits of scrap here and there. Um, but yes, it is really fun. There are some short rows in the back to make the back a little bit higher, and so it sits really nicely on. But yes, that was a really fun, fun knit. Um, she recommends you make it for, pick a size, she'll have four sizes, um, and pick a size that has four to 12 inches of positive ease. Um, it also gives you options for lengthening it. So if you wanted it to fit a little more poncho style or maybe you want it shorter so you can wear it more like a cowl, you can bring up the sides and just kind of like wear it so it's drapier in the front and not um, over your shoulders. Um, so it's really nice to have that option as well. The next test knit I did in this Soulful line is the Soulful Slouchy Hat. Now I never thought I would say a fingering weight hat flew off my needles, but this totally did. And I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the color work. Um, needle sizes used, I went one size down than what the pattern states. So I used US 3 or 3.25 millimeter and US 5, 3.75 millimeter and US 6, which is four millimeters. So you go up a size for your color work. Smallest needle size is done um, on this really cool broken twisted rib. Again, it's, so pretty and it is new to me as in like for this one too um so these two projects are the first times i've done that kind of ribbing on it and it's really pretty i love it now in this one you could pick one two three four colors you could easily do it in more or less colors if you want um, it also doesn't use up much yardage in each of the color work sections so it's a great way to use up leftover bits of sock yarn or from sweater projects or something if you wanted to use a gradient. I think this hat would look super cool either the main color or your contrast colors using a gradient yarn. Um, like think maybe if your hat was black and then you use this like bright gradient or even like bits of fluorescent um, yarn for the color work that would look super super cool. Um, right now I think this pattern comes in five sizes, toddler, child, and three adult, three adult sizes. She recommends one to two and a half inches of positive ease and gives out your measurements for that. My hat came out spot on for the depth and the circumference based on um, her pattern. So I love this hat so much. It is also a perfect hat to wear as we transition between seasons because it is so lightweight and it folds up small so I could literally put it in the back of my pocket, um, in my back pocket or in my purse or my backpack or whatever, um, in my coat pocket. Um, it's so fun. And I love the colors I ended up picking. I had posted on my Instagram some color combination options that I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. And I ended up picking this one because I feel like it's very springy um, and it will go with a lot of things that I like to wear. Although I suppose I don't really have like a color scheme you could say in my wardrobe. Some people say oh all my clothes are neutral so I like to wear bright colors for my accessories. I feel like I have neutral and colorful things in my wardrobe and then my accessories are all this like 
also very colorful. Um, maybe some of them are more muted, but I think I just have like a combination of different things. I just wear whatever makes me happy. So, um, and this hat definitely makes me happy. I am so excited to wear it. And the kids now want one too, so I'm going to make other com color combinations for their hats. Um, I believe, I don't think my husband really wears hats once it's above freezing, and we definitely have spring in the air, so I'm not sure if it's worthwhile making him one right now, or maybe if I do, I'll just save it for Christmas or something. Um, but I can definitely see making a whole family of this hat, because it comes in so many sizes and you can do so many different color combinations. The other finished project I have since last time we talked is my Pure Joy shawl. I did an entire episode on it telling you all about it um, and with pictures and it in action. Um, that is episode 18, so check that out if you would like to learn more about this Pure Joy shawl, the designer's Hohi Locatelli. I absolutely loved it loved love knitting it um, it is all garter with these eyelets and it has these wedges created by short rows and it is just so much fun and the type of shawl that i have decided i really enjoy knitting and it's a crescent shape um, so it drapes really well and it hugs the shoulders i kind of want to make a whole bunch of them but i feel like i have other things that i want to try first so once I get to those and maybe if I need to cast on a project that I um, don't have to think too hard about because I've done it already, then I'll go back to that. Um, and the next finished project I want to share with you. Um, so you may know that I really enjoy knitting the High Desert Socks pattern by Lindsay Fowler. Um, these are my, let's see, one, two, three, four, fifth pair of them fourth pair? I'm not sure. Um, but uh, Joanna of Stitching the High Notes is hosting a make-along right now um, inspired by Beatrix Potter and that hashtag is S-T-H-N Beatrix Potter M-A-L and um, I love these socks. So I knit these up with um, this heathered brown color as my contrast color and then two balls of a fleecy yarn um, that's self-striping and I was inspired by the frog Mr. Jeremy Fisher for these socks um, and the watercolor illustrations for him have all these browns and greens and blues and the ponds and lakes are very much part of my childhood and I guess even now um, we love to go fishing we like to go into the marshes and I remember as a kid like scooping up water and looking at what's inside um, either, either under a microscope or just looking at it um, I remember duckweed and looking under lily pads and dry looking at dragonflies and seeing all these different colors. These colors remind me of the story and of the ponds and it's just really fun to knit up marled self-striping yarn because you're not really sure what you're gonna get. Um, I was a little nervous about picking this brown that ended up being so close to the other brown but I think there's enough variation that you can see how I ended up doing this striping here. So I did use my contrast color for the striping here and then held the two balls of self-striping yarn double here and then threw out this rest of the sock and then went back to the contrast for the heel and the toe. So these are still a little damp. I finished them up late in the evening and I just absolutely love them. I did make my leg a little bit longer. You can see they're like almost off these sock blockers. Um, because I really like tucking in leggings into high socks and I like wearing these thicker socks for hiking and I think they'll also go well in my wellies when we're gardening. Um, I like to wear thicker socks in those as well. So super fun and there's also a high desert socks knit along going on right now hosted by Lindsay um, and so if you haven't cast on these socks yet and you really would like to I highly highly recommend them and I'm pretty sure I've talked about high desert socks in like every episode um, in the last month or so but yes I highly recommend the pattern um, 
I think that is it for my finished projects. Um, let me show you some works in progress that I have been working on. Not very many because I finished these other ones. Um, so I mentioned that I really, really like the Pure Joy Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. Well, my daughter also really liked it. So I am making her one too. I'm modifying the pattern for a DK weight and just to make it a little bit smaller. So here is my main color is all these jewel tones teals, purples, pinks. Now you may recognize this yarn from a previous episode where I was going to make the Beloved Bonnet by Tin Can Knits. Well, I frogged the beginning of that hat. I didn't get very far um, and decided to use it in the shawl instead. My contrast color is this lavender with all these different speckles. You might recognize this yarn from my Alejandra shawl also um, by the designer Hohi Locatelli. This yarn is by Shobha at Serendipitous Wool. It's her pin cushion urchin color. So I still had leftover after I did the tassels. So I am using it in this shawl. I am using size 8 needles, US 8 needles for this on the DK weight. Um, the original pattern is written for fingering weight. So you can see here how the wedges are coming alive. I can't stretch it out all the way because it'll go off the needles, but you can see my progress there. So yes, I made some modifications to make it work, but I am super excited. I am planning on just knitting until the yarn is out. So we will see how far that gets me, but I think my daughter's really excited about it and I am really excited about it too. It'll be really fun for her to wear All right, the other one I wanted to share with you, another pair of socks, but this time um, I am doing something where I want to um, do kind of a gradient striping almost. Um, so here are my notes. So I always use a composition notebook for all of my projects. I tab them as I go so I know what I'm working on. I usually have a table of contents in the beginning so I can find my projects a little more easy. Um, but I usually write down like needle size, what yarns I'm using and things like that and starting weights, finished weights and then what I used. So I'm hoping to try to do like a cuff here and then um, add in the second color or the main color gradually. So I've started with this. It is a mini skein from Woolberry Fiber Co. It is like the palest of pink lavender. And I've done a two by two rib so far, 15 rounds. I cast on 56 stitches with US 1 or 2.25 millimeter for my feet. And then this yarn is by the Kinetic Knitter. It is an 80-20 merino nylon two ply. And it is called Pop Rocks. And it is super fun. So it's got this like semi-solid purple and then all these specks of blue and orange and green in there. So I think so this will, be, this will knit up really fun. Um, so I wanted a plain like stockinette sock but I wanted something a little bit interesting to it so that's why I'm going to like gradually add that in. And then I'll probably do the contrast toe and heel in this color as well. I will weigh it after this cuff um, and just kind of see where I'm at to make sure I have enough for both socks. So that is what I'm working on. So cheers to being creative. I hope you have a wonderful day and that March is treating you well. Take care.